Good morning, everyone. Let me just share my screen. Hold on a second. All right. I hope you can see my screen. Good morning again. I am Clarissa Nalam. Welcome to Digital Jobs PH Technical Training on WordPress Web Development. This is a joint project of the Department of Information and Communications Technology and then uh, ICT Literacy and Competence Development Bureau and FAPSCO, Filipino Online Professional Service Cooperative. All right. So for module one, for this session, we're going to discuss introduction to online opportunities. All right, um, this material is produced uh, for FAPSCO and NEU should be, um, we should ask permission from FAPSCO. All right, in this, uh, in this session, we're expected to motivate students, to motivate you to finish the course, I hope, to set expectations about online freelancing and of course, to filter out students who are not 100% committed early on in this course, All right? Okay, introduction to the online industry. So you will learn in this session what is online industry, what is freelancing as well, the status of freelancing, what are the opportunities available for freelancers, what business models are available, what are the common tools used and services offered um, by um, for common tools used by freelancers and also the services they offer. And of course, we have to learn also the starter toolkit that we need if we want to, to move on with this um, freelancing stint. All right, so let's start. What is the online industry? So the internet, it is defined that the internet or online industry consists of small, medium, and big companies or individuals that provide a wide variety of products and services primarily online through their websites. So operations can include search engines, retailers, travel services, a lot of things. And then products or services may vary widely within the industry. So we all know that internet is now the delivery mechanism for almost all online activities, correct? If you have a product or a service, you can market or promote it through the internet. And then you can also do your selling there and um, integrate the payment arrangements through the, through the website and then also handle delivery, okay? And of course, after sales, there's also um, customer management part, which is already integrated in the website even in supply chains you know it has also um internet also plays a very big playground for um supply chains because um for companies they can do their sourcing they can coordinate deliveries and shipments as well for the for the raw materials that they need so indeed um the online industry is a vast playground for for a lot of industries okay um and then what powers this um what do you think what's the breathing ground for uh for this kind of industry so it's said that now we stand on the brink of a technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live work and relate to one another Okay, um, this is called the 4IR, if you're familiar, Fourth Industrial Revolution. In its scale, scope, and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has experienced before. So we do not know yet 
how will it unfold or is it being is it unfolding now i think it is but one thing is clear the response to it must be integrated and comprehensive involving all stakeholders of the global polity from the public and private sector sectors to academia and civil society okay so as you can see in my slides here the first industrial revolution which started in 1765 used water and steam power to mechanize production okay the second one which started in 1870 so it's about a century after uh, used electric power to create mass production so under that it was driven by electricity and oil-based power so jenna uso yung mass production okay the third revolu industrial revolution happened in 1969 again after a century right and then it used electronics and information technology to automate production so it's it's what we have now but now this third uh, industrial revolution becomes the breeding ground for the fourth one so um the digital revolution that has been occurring on the third uh sorry the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of the last century is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical digital and biological spheres so it said that there are three reasons why today's transformations represent not merely a prolong prolonging of the third three ir but also the arrival of four i four industrial revolution and it's characterized by velocity scope and systems impact so you um we can see because it's transition time so we cannot really imagine when will for ir start or has it started but obviously if we look at the things that um the components or the characteristics that are described in the fourth industrial revolution it's already happening now okay when compared with previous industrial revolutions the fourth is evolving at an exponential rather than a linear pace so mas mabilis to and it is disrupting almost every industry in every country and the breadth and depth of these changes herald the transformation of entire systems of production management and governance so the possibilities of billions of people connected by mobile devices with unprecedented processing power storage capacity and access to knowledge are unlimited and these possibilities will be multiplied by emerging technology breakthroughs in fields such as so ito na yon ito na yung mga uh, components ng 4IR artificial intelligence robotics the internet of things autonomous vehicles 3D printing nanotechnology biotechnology material science energy storage and quantum computing Dameno. so so uh, that was just an introduction of what is the fourth industrial revolution how does it relate to online uh, industry of course um with that having said that in a 2018 survey of 6,500 executives worldwide conducted by BCG Henderson Institute in partnership with Harvard Business School's Managing the Future of Work initiative, uh, roughly 40% of the respondents said they expected freelance workers to account for an increased share of their organization's workforce over the coming five years. So it was a 2018, so ongoing yung five years na yon. And 50% of the respondents agreed that corporate adoption of gig platforms would be a significant or highly significant trend. So, um, 
Okay, uh, how does it relate again the fourth industrial revolution? Let me just oh uh, let me just put in the next slide first. Okay, this is these are the components I mentioned on the fourth industrial revolution. So the technology is fueling for IR. So you have cybersecurity, a lot of documents, augmented reality, big data, autonomous robots, 3D printing, autonomous vehicles, system integration, cloud computing, and internet of things. So these are all um, done online. These are all over the net, but um, does it function on its own? We all know that behind all this are humans, right? And um, there's a probability that uh, it is powered by the gig, you know, gig workers, gig economy workers, like freelancers, okay? So um, I would like to stress this up again that um, in the pre-pandemic survey that I mentioned earlier conducted by um, BCG, by BCG and Harvard Business School to identify the future of work. It says that um, without even noticing, no, because it's, it's a small portion, but uh, having analyzed it, the new freelancers are active in all industries, including B2B and retail sales and education. So, Hindi lang siya just a traditional freelance of mobility, delivery, IT, and data processing. It's already across um, other processes, okay? And it's also um, across all industries. If you can see in this um, slides, um, agriculture, mining, fishing, um, manufacturing, construction and real estate, transportation and logistics, wholesale and retail services, of course, information, finance and insurance, health care and social assistance and education and public, what they call this, administration. But of course, the biggest one would be under information, but if you can see, um, it's also present across all other industries. Yung presence ni gig economy or the uh, freelancers, okay? So in the Philippines though, okay, according, this is another pre-pandemic, you know, another pre-pandemic data. According to a 2019 report by Pioneer, Pioneer, on Global Gig Economy Index, the Philippines placed six in the world as the fastest growing market for the gig industry, revealing a 35% growth in freelance earnings. So you can see there, pang anin siya, US, UK, Brazil, Pakistan, Ukraine, and the next would be the Philippines. So driven by digital technology and high internet penetration, more Filipinos are choosing to freelance. According to PayPal's 2018 Global Freelancer Insights Report, at least 2% of the Philippine population is said to be freelancers, one way or another. Okay. The report also found that 84% of freelancers use a freelance online platform such as Upwork and Freelancer. Okay, we know that. Some of the many types of works Filipino freelancers are engaged with are data entry, internet research, that would compose of about 34%, virtual assistance it would be at 13%, and customer service at 8%. So in the same survey, um, in the same survey of PayPal. It also revealed that digital platforms provide ease and convenience for freelancers to receive payments from clients overseas. So, may mga um, nandun yung uh, existence ng services of freelancing service, meron na rin mga platforms that have been in place to serve the freelancing communities. Okay, so andyan na siya, di ba? 
And then, much more, not only on the economic side, not only on the social side, but also on the government side. You know, Filipino freelancers are supported by government initiatives such as the Digital Jobs PH Technical Training. That's exactly what we are taking up today. It, will, it helps people find work as digital entrepreneurs and freelancers in the information communications technology field. The government recognizes the potential of the gig economy to provide meaningful work to rural folks who are otherwise left out in the industrialization of cities. Okay. If you can see here, let me just show you um this is an example you know payment received from the client for five days of work this is for isa a government employee earns five thousand per week on the sideline so uh, most of the freelancers that we have are parang second second job lang nila yung freelancing they have a permanent job like with isa she's a government uh employee okay the next example is, is for Carla, senior high school student, who earns 400 pounds per month while studying. So, uh, British pounds, wow, that's for, that's three, three GBP per hour naman pala. So, yun. Okay, the next one, another example would be Donna, a senior citizen earning $10 per hour after after the training with Digital Jobs PH, FOPSCO, and ICT Literacy and Competence Bureau. So, um, here are just examples. This one is a more touching example. This is, you can see that this kind, this Digital Jobs PH technical training is not only economically um, benefiting the freelancer enthusiast or the freelancers who, who took the training, but also it is empowering um, other sectors of society, like with Raquel Sara Castro. She is uh, PWD born with cerebral palsy. And then um, she enrolled in Digital Jobs PH technical training on e-commerce and digital marketing course in 2018. And now, um, she is already um, productive in a way because she's got a lot of clients. And of course, she has earned a lot of, uh, of um, relief and admiration from uh, a lot of uh, fellow freelancers. If you know, you know that with all her disabilities, she's able to perform and be productive. So... If she is, if she can, why can't we, right? Okay. The next one, uh, how um, we now go to the business models, popular business models on freelancing. So we have three here. You can be guru, retail, or through subscription. With guru, you have promotion of an expertise or niche service. Retail, selling of products or services usually on fixed price that can be purchased online. And then subscription or selling of products or services that can be availed of as a package on a regular basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Okay. So what, uh, what are the popular online professional skills? So here are, here's a list which is just, you know, the, the most popular, but there are more niche um, services offered by freelancers, which are, it may not be as popular, but since it is niche, it's also better high paying, more high paying than, than the ones that's more populated, right? So here, here it is, virtual assistant, you can be data entry, transcription, customer support, graphics design, web development, that's the one you're enrolled in, content writing, email marketing, search engine marketing, social 
media marketing and a lot more of course these are the um skills that are uh that should be acquired by online professionals okay so what are the benefits let's just the uh, let's differentiate you know if you choose to be an employee if you choose to be a freelancer or if you choose to be an, an entrepreneur first if you're an employee then you're an employee uh, you have salaries and benefits you have security of tenure you have a steady budgeted income so it's basically more stable um it's worry less right but um if you're a freelancer you have no salaries and benefits you have no security of tenure you have no steady budgeted income okay and then if you're an entrepreneur just the same no salaries and benefits no security of tenure no steady budgeted income talagang wala okay uh, don't com don't even compare with being an employee pagdating sa point na to. but then the employee works hard for the boss okay the freelancer works for you you work for your own profit okay and then um you work harder you get more okay that's that's just it unlike when you're an employee you work hard you can work the whole time and still you work hard for the boss but when you're in an entrepreneur you're the boss okay that's the difference of course when you're an employee you have a boss or supervisor um you get a promotion though if you do well um when you're a freelancer you work for yourself in a way you're also the boss because you will determine how much income will you get okay but the difference is that um when you're an employee you have a job description you have deadlines to meet you have a supervisor to follow you cannot move you have no freedom there you work and you get paid you have secure theft tenure, but in terms of having the freedom to do what you want, whether work related or not, you don't have that. And like when you're a freelancer, you do the job you want, you perform the task that you're passionate with, you set your own deadline, so you get a lot of freedom. Okay. With being an entrepreneur, of course, you're the boss, so you work to sustain and grow your business. So um, the success also depends on how are you going to perform, okay? But then you have the option, since you're the boss, you get to do the job you want. You can also delegate to your staff and you set the deadline. So there is also freedom there. So I guess that's it. That's the, the um, difference, okay? For, um, so this is just to show what's being an employee. Of course, you're very well dressed and it's a corporate, there's a corporate ladder, there's a corporate environment. So you have to dress up for that environment. With being an online professional, you can be anywhere. You can be in your kitchen, like the one in the photo. And then you can be in your garden or what, as long as you have internet and you have your tools like your laptop, okay? Of course, with being an entrepreneur, uh, you also have to dress up for the for that kind of environment. You're the boss, so you also have to be present in your um, in your shop or in your work. Okay, so um, just to show the difference between this um, these groups. Okay, next one, what? So to specialize and become an online professional. So there are different reasons why an, an individual would like to become an online professional. Although not everyone is cut off for it. So you need to be, in case lang, uh, you need to be willing to work at flexible hours. So it can be morning or uh, it depends, uh, graveyard shift and all that. You spend working time mostly alone and talk to peers online. That's right. Because 
Because it's like if you work on a graveyard shift, in fact, you have no one to talk to. Everyone's sleeping in the Philippines. <laughs> so, um, number three, when you start handling a good number of online jobs, your social life will also be affected. That's sad, no? Because nga, like, like as I said, if you have to work on a graveyard shift, then you'll be uh, alone, working, while everyone's sleeping. And when it's, when it's your time to sleep, everyone is up and about so you, you you that's the sad note about it but of course um that will be that will depend on your choice number four you can lose projects hence the need to be actively seeking for opportunity so it's not like uh, as i mentioned if you're employed you have security of tenure you're a regular employee then they cannot just fire you right while be, when you're a freelancer, um, when they have, when, for example, your client have, have come up with a new project and it's beyond the skills that you can offer, then you can lose the project and they get to hire somebody else who's more familiar with it. And then you get to start looking for a new one for yourself, okay? Number five, you may also fail to meet client expectations at times. That's the need to recover from it. So I guess it's self-explanatory. So <clears throat> having said that, what you need would be skills, abilities, knowledge. So you have to be committed. You have to have that go-to attitude. Of course, um, this is online um, freelancing. So you need a computer or laptop with a decent internet connection. Decent internet connection you need a headset and webcam for interviews you need skills knowledge and abilities that um of course uh that's that's what you serve for right that's what you offer the skills the knowledge and the ability to handle the project okay you got to have that attitude work and business ethics all right and of course, your networks, family, friends, and friends of friends. And of course, you have to know also the systems and procedures. So now we know what powers the online industry, what, what uh, triggers it, what's coming up. We also know we... Um, we also know that uh, freelancing has a promising career, you'll have a promising career uh, for that, at least economic well-being, because uh, it will be a popular um, popular job gig economy in the future. Okay, you know also now, how does it differ from being an employee and being an entrepreneur? And then you also know uh, what are the setbacks, challenges, okay, when you are an online professional? You also know now what do you basically need to proceed, okay? So, are you ready to get started? Okay, so now let's discuss the starter toolkit. If you're, in, uh, okay, this is a comparison as well. Employee, decide what skill or service you want to offer. So your employee, of course, when you apply for a job, you already identify what are you, accountant or accounting assistant or whatever. And then update your resume or curriculum vitae. You search for a VA agency sites if, if you're a virtual assistant. Create your profile to check out job vacancies. You know, this is... Um, like more on the marketplaces and then you prepare for an interview that's that's what you do right when you uh, want to become an employee now if you're an entrepreneur let me jump being an entrepreneur <clears throat> you decide for your business model and then put up your website and social media presence of course, you, you apply for business permits, for BAI registration and the like. Okay, and then you build your marketing strategy. 
you hire people to leverage work, you build your brand, company's brand. And then um, you also get to use some tools like Trello, C Drive, Toggle, etc. You get trained staff or you train your staff, okay? And then, of course, you should have contracts and payments gateway. So these are, you know, bank matters or should also be in place. And then the, you start the operations and handle as well the after sales. Okay. However, if for freelancer, you decide for your niche. That's different from being an entrepreneur. No? You decide your business model. Here, you decide for your niche. You read your profiles. Make sure that um, you have um, you have profiles that uh, exactly describe you and your kind of services and capabilities you know, your portfolio, your brand through the websites and social media accounts that you have. And then you search for online opportunities, maybe through uh, marketplaces or, or through uh, putting SEO in your website. And then be visible, offer value online, and then build your authority on that kind of niche, okay? Build your marketing strategy as well as a freelancer. And then um, prepare for discovery session. And then, of course, contracts and payment gateway as well. And start client work or project. Well, now uh, also make sure you have business permits, BIR registrations. If you want, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to appear as a, there's a certain legitimacy, of course, if, if you um, apply for business permit and BIR registration, you have to declare your income. Okay, so common tools for online professionals. So here they are. So you got to have a Google Classroom account. Gmail and G Drive, Google Drive. Uh, this goes together. You just have to create an account with Google and you get all these three. You have to have an account with Trello, Clackify, Toggle, Symmetric, LastPass as well for your passwords, HelloSign. And then for your meetings, you need Zoom or Skype. And of course, for your appointments, also, or share the appointment with clients who need Calendly. I think, yeah, it should also include Grammarly if you are challenged with grammar, okay? Now, now we go to end of module one lesson video. So the next one, uh, we will discuss the task on basic, on how to create those online tools that I mentioned, all right? Thank you so much and see you on module two. Okay, bye for now.